57. Given that the delta G of formation for PB2 plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous is negative 24.3 kilojoules per mole and negative 131.2 kilojoules uh, per mole respectively, determine the solubility product, which is the KSP, for PBCl2 solid. Okie dokie. So, it seems like, at the end of the day, we have to find out that KSP, right? The solubility product. Now, this is a capital K. This is an equilibrium constant. Now, when I think of equilibrium values, right, a K value with delta Gs, I'm thinking of formulas that I know between them. And there's only one formula, and it's this one down here, right? The equilibrium constant K equals the E button on the calculator, and the E is all raised to the negative delta G divided by R times T. So let's just bring this up for a little bit. And let's see, do I know any values? Now, I'm trying to solve for the solubility product, specifically the KSP, right? Now, it doesn't really matter what K you're, you're sol solving for if you're using this equation. You could have used KA, KB. In this case, they asked for KSP, so sure. We always know the R value, because that's constant, right? 8.314 if we're using energy, which we are. Delta G is an energy value. And the units for this would be joules per mole times Kelvin. So delta G is only allowed to be in joules, and the temperature has to be in Kelvin. Now, they didn't specifically say uh, what temperature is here, right? I don't see any temperature values, but they do give me a clue that I'm using delta G notch values, especially for formation values. Whenever you're using delta G notch, that means standard, and this is always at room temp. Room temp is 25 degrees Celsius. So now we know that was the little secret that we're dealing with 25 degrees Celsius, but unfortunately we have to use it in Kelvin, but that's okay because I could just convert 25 degrees Celsius into Kelvin, right? I could just plus 273, more specifically 273.15, and I get 298.15. So that's the number that I'm using for the temperature. So I have R, I have T, I'm solving for the KSP, and I need a delta G. Oh! <laughs> wow. Interesting. Let's move on, shall we? Okay, so delta G notch, right? Now, this delta G is for the whole entire reaction, not individual delta G of formations that they gave us. So in order to get a delta G for a whole reaction, I first have to have a balanced equation. But they give me a little hint here, right? Solubility product. That means that I'm always taking my solid and breaking it down into the aqueous material. So I have PB, Cl2, that's the solid. And this will break down into PB, 2 plus, that's aqueous, plus Cl minus. I just need to make sure that this is balanced. And I do see that I have two CLs. So I need to put a two in front of here. Now we're balanced. And now let's just link up the delta G values that they gave me. They told me that PB2 plus was the negative 24.3, right? When they say respectively, that means whoever they stated first gets the number first. So the PB2 plus goes with the negative 24.3, and then the CL minus is the negative 131.2. But uh-oh. They didn't give me a delta G formation for PBCL2. That's why you got to go in the back of the textbook to look up that delta G formation. And that's exactly what I did. So since we're at room temp, we are allowed to use, we are allowed to use um, the appendix values. So PBCL2 has a negative 314.1. And we're just going to, know that this is kilojoules per mole. It says it right here. So we'll take that into account at the end. But now how do I get a delta G for the whole entire reaction from now individual delta Gs? Well, that's this formula right here. So let's just maybe make this a little smaller. So delta G for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is reaction, equals the sum. And now since I'm looking at this, I do need a little space. Sum, that's that symbol. That just means 
add up your products minus the sum of your reactants. We just have to make sure that you take into consideration how many you have. You had one PBCL2. So just for good practice, I'll take that number and times it by one. I had one PB2 plus, so that gets times by one, right? There was a one here, but now I have two CLs. So I have to times this by two. And now sum up the sides, it was PB2 plus plus CL minus. So I just add the two products together. I don't have to add the reactants together because there was only one reactant. So this would be negative 314.1 total. And now let's see, I have negative 24.3 plus two times a negative 131.2. Negative 224.3 plus two times, yep, that looks good to me, negative 286.7. Now I could plug it into my equation. Delta G for the whole entire reaction equals the sum of the products, negative 286.7 minus the sum of the reactants, which was just the negative 314.1. And now I have delta G for the whole entire reaction equals this value minus a negative 314.1. And that looks good to me. So I come out with 27.4, and the units here would be in kilojoules, right? Because each value was in kilojoules per mole, but these numbers that you multiplied were the mole values. They were the coefficients. So you're just left with kilojoules. So we could throw this number in here, but our value says, uh-uh, only joules are allowed. So before I do that, I just have to quickly convert the kilojoules into joules. That's easy, just times it by uh, 1,000. You could take the decimal, move it to the uh, right three times. So 27400, zero, zero. so 27,400. And now I can plug that number in. Okay, so let's see, maybe, maybe I'll bring this over here. So equilibrium constant, specifically KSP, equals E raised to the negative. That's in the formula. Division sign. The joules was a positive, 27,400, divided by the two values. We got 8.314. And we have the temperature, which was what, 298? 298.15. What I would do first is I would just simplify this value then I'll just take the E value to it. So KSP equals E all raised to the negative 27,400 divided by 8.314 divided by 298.15. Looks good to me. And I get negative 11.053 and more numbers, which I'm not going to round because that's not the final answer. But now I'm going to find that KSP. Second LN. Take the whole value. There you go. Press enter. And now I'll add, uh, I guess, three sig figs. So 1.58. 1 1.58 times 10 to the negative fifth. No units for the solubility product. So we are done. Whoop, whoop. What'd you think? Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, yeah, just gets the word out there in the YouTube universe that this cool educational channel exists. Check out the channel. We also have physics and math videos on the channel at the moment. Lots of them. I think we're coming up to 5,000 videos, and it's all for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So let's just keep working hard, all right? Um, I'll see you in the next lesson, and have an awesome day. Okay, bye-bye.